In Unit 2.2, two, we're going to be learning about conditional statements or how to analyze statements that are written in if-then form. So a, any statement that's written in if-then form is called a conditional statement. Here we have an example of a conditional statement. If it is Saturday, then there are no classes. Each conditional statement is made up of a hypothesis and a, a conclusion. Your hypothesis is what comes after the word if. So here after the word if, it says it is Saturday, that would be our hypothesis. Your conclusion is the part after the word then. So it says then there are no classes. So our conclusion is there are no classes. So here in our first examples, we're going to be identifying the hypothesis and conclusion for each conditional statement. Here it says if x minus 8 equals 32, then x equals 40. So after the word if is our hypothesis, so our hypothesis is that x minus 8 equals 32. And after the word then is our conclusion, so our conclusion is that x equals 40. In our next statement, it says if a polygon has four right angles, so a polygon has four right angles is our hypothesis. And the part after then is our conclusion. So it says then the polygon is a rectangle. So our conclusion is that the polygon is a rectangle. In the next section, we're going to be writing each statement in if-then form. So here they didn't write them in if-then form. We're going to convert them to if-then form. So 3 says the sum of the measures of complementary angles is 90. So I can separate this into two parts. I can separate it into angles being complementary and the fact that their sum adds up to 90. So I could say if angles are complementary, then the sum of the measures is 90. So we're just splitting it up into two parts and writing it as an if-then statement. Our next statement here says collinear points lie on the same line. So we're saying code in your points and that they lie on the same line. So I can separate this into if points are collinear, or if we have collinear points, then the points lie on the same line. You don't have to write it word for word like I do, but the point is you're trying to find the hypothesis. So here it's that the points are collinear and the conclusion. So our conclusion is, well, if they're collinear, then they lie on the same line. Our last section here wants us to determine if these statements are true. If they are true, we're fine. If they're false, then we need to give a counter example. So statement number five says if you add two even numbers, your result is an odd number. So our hypothesis is that we're adding two even numbers. We want to test this out and see if the conclusion is true. So we're going to add two even numbers. Let's say like two and four. That would give me six. So our result is even. But here the conclusion was that the result should be odd. So right away I can tell this is a false statement. And if it was false, it wanted our counterexample. So our counterexample here could be the numbers 2 and 4. Because if you add them, you get an even result. There's many other um, counterexamples we could have given. We could have done like 8 and 10. 8 plus 10 is... 18, which is also even and not an odd number. Question 6 says if A is positive, so that's our hypothesis, 
then 10a is greater than a. So let's test out our hypothesis. Let's pick a positive number for a. Let's say a equals 2. And now let's figure out 10a. Well, if I do 10 times 2, I get 20. So here, 10a is greater than a. In fact, for any positive number that we use, we would get a bigger answer because you're multiplying times 10, which would make your result bigger. So this is a true statement. So just to summarize, conditional statements are statements that can be written in if-then form. They're made up of a hypothesis and a conclusion. Your hypothesis comes after the word if. Your conclusion comes after the word then. And to check if it's a true statement or not, you want to test out your hypothesis.